I think we just were just connecting as like black artists and talking about life. And, and if I believe in me, that's a problem for you. If I'm not who they want, I know that I didn't let myself down. Yeah. And I was like, that's her right there. <laughs> Whoa there, everybody. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Welcome to Entertainment Weekly Around the Table. Today we're talking about Queen and Slim. I'm Lena Way, the screenwriter and one of the producers of the film. I'm Melina Matsukis, a director and a producer on the film. Daniel Kaluuya plays Slim. And I'm Jodie Tana Smith, I play Queen. And we are Queen and Slim. <laughs> yeah. A family. A family, a black family. What made you pick me? I liked your picture. You had this sad look on your face, I felt sorry for you. Damn. Here's the, I think, one of the special things about the movie is that I think it was sort of born out of the black renaissance in which we're living in right now. And that I got word that you wanted to have dinner with me um, through my agency. <laughs> um, and I was like, yeah, of course. Yeah, I want to have dinner with Daniel. Um, and we had dinner. And it was just, I think we just were just connecting as like black artists and talking about life. And it just very naturally came up that I was that I had written this movie and it was a first draft. I hadn't definitely hadn't gotten it to Molina yet because it wasn't, I wasn't, I wanted to make sure it was as good as it could be before I got it to Molina. <clears throat> but you you said, hey, can I read it? And it was very organic about you wanting to read it. And I said to us, it was early, yeah, but yeah, you can read it. And you went and you read it and then you emailed me and you said you needed to be slim. Mm -hmm. And I think that was really the beginning, I think, of this journey. That's the start of the genesis. I, I read the pilot of the show. Oh, so yeah. So the pilot you mm -hmm. shot. And I was like, who is? And I kept on speaking about you in England. And then when I saw you. At I just the Tastemaker think, screening, yeah, for Tastemaker Get Out. screening. I yeah. just said, I just think you're amazing. I went, I made a beeline. And I was like, <laughs> I was there. Thomas said, oh, Lena Wayne I was like, would you? You just told me now? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and then I, I, I spoke to you for the rest of the night. I didn't speak yeah. to anybody else. So when we sat down, you said you had a script as a fan. And I was like, oh, man, this is it. Mm -hmm. This is it. And it's funny because I've been saying it recently. I was like, people ask me, goes, oh, Daniel, what do you, is there any changes? I'm like, the first draft isn't really dissimilar to yeah. the film. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And I'm saying that's how rare a script yeah. and rare a writer Lena is. It was there. It was mm -hmm. there. Not, like, mm -hmm. It was kind of like there was shades and nuances, right? nuances and complexities that right. were added, but it took to the, the art. The structure. The yeah. structure. If you look at narratively, mm -hmm. it was there. Absolutely. And so that's why I was like, it's there. This is, this is, and you rarely see that in scripts point blank. Why'd you connect to Slim so much? Mm. I connected to Slim because I've been in a situation where if you respect yourself, that's a problem. Right. Oh. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Especially with the police where you're out, it's out of control. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's when oppression mm -hmm. is, as, is so visceral. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because you're literally, I have one context, I have one mentality, you have another context, oh. you have your mentality. Mm -hmm. And if I believe in me, that's a problem for you. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? To and, respect and yourself is disrespectful. That is mm -hmm. like, you do this to me all the time. Like, <laughs> I gotta put that in the script somewhere. Like just the idea of us respecting ourselves yeah. is disrespectful to yeah. white people. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I love that he was just like, he's not the candidate. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. not the kind of guy that would go into that situation right, right. and that happened. So it's like kind of thing going. But like he becomes that. Yeah, yeah, he becomes that because he has to mm -hmm. in order to survive. Do you know what I'm saying? It's either he and dies. And what he learns from Queen. Exactly. You know, by the end. And then the love story. Mm -hmm. It was just that kind of, it was so delicately written mm -hmm. and handled that I was just like, you just rarely, s it's so hard to make things simple. Mm. It's so difficult. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people don't appreciate simplicity. Mm -hmm. And I saw, that I was like, these, these, there's a lot of hours in this. There's a lot of hours in this. And so then we sat down and then I just said, I want to place them. And then, uh, and then he said, oh, whoa there. <laughs> <laughs> whoa there, buddy. Oh, yeah. uh, I, got a, I got a friend called Melina. She yeah. wants to see you. Okay. And she's not too sure. Thanks for the protection. What? No, no. But I, she didn't say that she then. Hates she didn't say that then. I no. heard that from the, I heard that. Well, to be honest, yeah. you know, we already had a great collaborative nation, uh, relationship already from right. Master of Night. Yes. And I remember you saying, oh, I have this script, you have to direct it. And yes. I also told her, whoa. Whoa there. <laughs> whoa there. Um, and not because I didn't have faith in your, your talent as a writer, but just because I wanted my passion for your poetry and the words to really be what drove me right. to that project, right. right? My passion for the script, not right. our relationship. Right. But then I read it and I couldn't put it down. I read it in an hour, you mm -hmm. know? It didn't feel like work for once. Like, mm -hmm. we get all these scripts all the time, right? And 
it was just a great story. Mm -hmm. And it was political and it said something provocative, but it was this beautiful black love story, you know? And I felt like I could breathe life into this. Mm -hmm. And then it was you on top of it. So it was like, oh, this is my sister. Like, <laughs> right. and it's both of our first time. And I knew how effective our relationship was already as creators together and what happens when we came together. What took you so long to respond to me? I didn't realize that much time had passed. I sent you a very well-crafted message three weeks ago. I spell-checked it and everything got crickets. And today, out of the blue, you hit me up asking if you want to grab dinner. What changed? So, agree to meet with Daniel. I'm waiting. You're late. <laughs> She's nervously <laughs> waiting by the phone, apparently. I did not know that. Yes. Uh, and here this fool comes walking up, and I'm like, oh, he's really cute. <laughs> and... You were just so real. I'm like, oh, he's a real dude. Like, he's a brother. Like, he's a nigga. Yeah, you know, yeah. I didn't know that. Honestly, like, I yeah, didn't you know. Did. You said that to me. You like, oh, he a nigga? I was like, yeah. yes. Because <laughs> I'm like, you ain't get out. You got this white girlfriend. Like, I don't know. You know, yeah. you're real proper. In, on the movie screen, yes. not in real life. Yeah. Yes. No, no. In the, in the screen. Yeah, just, yeah. And I got to know you. Like, I got to know your experiences. You know, you talked about your experience with being harassed by the police mm -hmm. and, and the courage that you had, you know, to fight back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was like, he's a fighter. Like, he, he has that same thing that Slim has in his heart. And then I, you know, then I started watching everything and hearing that I knew about your writing and, like, how deep of a thinker you were, you know, which is also Slim. Like, he's simple, but, like, he believes in greatness mm -hmm. in the world and family, mm -hmm. you know, and we talked about that. and. Even your thoughts on the script, they were all really impressive. And I remember, you know, I don't know, it was probably 10 minutes later, I was like, okay, so you're slim, right? I just wanna let you know that I'm okay and that I love you. I want a guy to show me myself. I want him to love me so deeply. I'm not afraid to show him how ugly I can be. Thank you for bringing us this far. And, and, uh, and then as things sort of started moving, we, we knew, we were like, okay, well now we need a missing piece, which is Queen. Our Queen. And it was really important that we use this opportunity to... Break somebody. Break a new black actress. You were in the first batch. You were in the first batch. You were just so confident, so regal. You had this uh, strength about you that Queen had. And also, you could play between this protective facade that she has and then this vulnerability right. in which she grows into. How did and you I, feel? In it was something I wanted so bad. And I heard about, you know, the project, it was hot. It was a hot project. Mm -hmm. I found out about it on, in the press. Mm -hmm. And when I saw it in the press, I wrote my team and I was like, what's this? Mm -hmm. So I was just like, I was so amped up about this thing. You know, I was a big fan of Daniel. I mean, I saw Get Out four times in the cinema. But I was so nervous when I walked into that chemistry read. And I think, you know, it's it's something that's very queen-like in that it's like, no matter what you're feeling on the inside, you just like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we couldn't, I couldn't tell. You no, know, it's like, nope, I'm, I am here, I own the space. Yes, everything yeah, every, yeah, everything is fine while it's like screaming on the inside. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't even really have an understanding of even like how it went. I should have like maybe had a little bit of an inkling because because you guys were like, let's get a picture of the two of you yeah, together. Yeah, that's true. Which right? is a phenomenal Ooh, photo that Carmen yes. took. And so we, and we did that picture, but I got in the car and I literally called my team and I'm like crying and bawling and I'm just like, I don't know how it went, classic but I Jody. get, yeah, yes. classic Cry. Jody. You're so bawling and we're like I know. bursting with excellent. excitement. I'm, I'm like, thank like, God. And I'm like, well, I'm like, well, I don't know how it went, but I, but I did, like, I did the work and I gave it. And if this is not what, if it's, if I'm not who they want, I know that I didn't let myself down yeah. because I went in there yeah. and I did what I felt like. Yeah. I'm like emotional talking about getting a weeper, Aww. but it was just like this remarkable and amazing thing because it's like, and people keep asking like, oh, how do you feel that this project like changed my life just yeah. because like to work with the three of you, to collaborate with somebody like Daniel who just like so giving and like mm -hmm. and, kind, and so yeah. kind and mm -hmm. real and you just never made me feel like you don't know what you're doing and you're you know what i mean you were always just like oh, we're right there with me and like mm -hmm. teaching me it was so beautiful to watch because yeah. there was this love story obviously happening happening in the camera but there was yeah. also this love story yeah. happening on yeah. set between you two mm -hmm. in the car and this trust and this energy it was just beautiful to witness 
Yeah. You know, both mm -hmm. like the chemistry on screen and it, it, it's in real life. And I think from you and I, even though we already were close and, and right. connected, the thing I keep telling people about this experience is that it bonded you and I forever. <laughs> Yeah. We were in a war. We were like... There were so many obstacles on the set, and I, and I always say, like, I feel like it had to be that. It had to be a hard shoot because mm -hmm. we were honoring, right, all these people yeah. whose yeah. lives were taken we because of police ground. brutality. Yeah. Exactly. So I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but we were challenged. Yeah. From the first week, we show up, we're in Cleveland, and it's a polar vortex, polar vortex. Crazy. you know? And you're having to shoot this, ex you know, extremely, both of you, like, but waited. But putting his hands on the car. Yeah, my hands on like, the car. You like, the, that car... Putting my hands on the car and then like having to be in that be in that headspace mm. and just go and still like trying to play the nuance of the injustice. And but I remember, hands on I this remember car. saying they you want me to heat up the car, yeah. and you were like, "No, no, no! I want to feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. want to feel that, and to see how the environment and those elements informed your performance. Yeah, yeah. Could you please hurry up? What did you say? It's just cold. Why is he under arrest? What is your badge number? Chill, just chill. I'm reaching for my cell phone. Because it's inhumane. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 exactly. the, the, the interaction is inhumane. Yeah. So it, the, 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 the temperature informs that Absolutely. and actually colors it. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's why the improv line, like, it's cold, which, what, like, right. where, where we kind of spoke about, it's kind of like because. It's cold. It's cold. It's cold. Yeah. And we re that was a really difficult. I, w mm -hmm. I really wrestled with how what is going to be the tipping point. Right. And mm -hmm. when we was rehearsing, we couldn't find it. And then when we was in Cleveland, mm -hmm. we found, found it. it. Do you know what right. I'm saying? Because it's like, it yo, was. I'm asking for basic human rights here. Absolutely. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Please, right. like, it's cold. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. you, you ain't finding anything. Yeah, you're bleeding. And um, it was a really, it, it pushed all of us. I mean, there was heads of departments dropping. Oh. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I, I almost dropped. I was like, yeah, yeah. I, I gotta get out of here. Thank you for this journey, no matter how it ends. Uh, what inspired you? She would send me guys from Jersey. Yeah. Like, like he's uh, just like a regular Jersey guy, but you know that doesn't translate for him. Yeah. So in like small town, he never left. It's just like, you know, when you've been single for so long, you haven't had to compromise. Mm -hmm. You actually don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. So eating food. Eating someone else's food on a date, taking them right. to a diner, is a humongous blind spot. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? He doesn't realize he's never had to accommodate. Right. Mm -hmm. And not from a malicious place. No. A kind of innocence. Yeah. Right. Of it's an entitlement. You know, you know what it is? I think Slim is navigating black male privilege mm -hmm. in that the beginning. It's just yeah, that it's that absolutely. kind of like, I'm a catch. Right. Oh. <laughs> like I'm in thirty eight dollars an hour, you should want me. Mm -hmm. oh. Like I don't know who you know she's gonna get. Do you right. know what I'm saying? <laughs> like and, and like that in his context and yeah. in her context, she's like, this guy is not Stepping you put up, no effort do you know what I'm saying? And then, and it's um, intensifying the conflict mm. in 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 a dynamic, and so that really helped me. And then I don't know, I kind of, uh, I that's another thing why I read the script. I, I reminded me, especially the sex scene and the riot scene. I'd seen that in an old film called Quadrophenia. And I remember you like, and it was like, and I remember watching. I go, that's such a great idea. And I did to have it. like a set sex with like the intensity of a riot and I and I so when I saw it I was like this is gonna work yeah for me I, I really I was you know I love that you come in with like these ideas about who you feel like mm -hmm. that you know who you felt like Queen was and, mm -hmm. and what what you sort of related to and so you know when I read the Angela Davis autobiography which I thought was so interesting because the first part of that when she's talking about being a fugitive on the run mm -hmm. And just the anxiety of that, and she's talking about the anxiety that you have when you're right. on the run. Yeah, and I mean, I, I pulled so much from her and from that, and I was mm -hmm. just like, of course, of course, Melina would give me the, just, <laughs> here's a Bible. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> and also just like, in a way, it wasn't about really looking at fictional films as inspiration. It was about looking at a lot of this black horror that we right. see, the reality of that, the fear in that, the way that this woman was like, she knew her rights. Mm -hmm. And it's that thing that you say about respecting yourself, you know, is disrespectful to them. Like, because she respected herself, it was disrespectful to that police officer. We watched it in the car, yeah. in that scene. Wow. Before we shot it, we was yeah. watching it. Yeah. So when I said the turn signal, wow. it was directly, I'd yeah. seen it just before. Right. Yeah. I'd seen it just before and it was just it was in my mind. That. And then, because Jody was like, look, let's, let's just watch it yeah. while, before we go out into the cold. Wow. So, um, yeah. Incredible. And just like the energy of that, you know, because what is really important for me as somebody, you know, I didn't go to drama school and, I'm, and it is still very new for me. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even though it's, it's just, I've done some television before, mm -hmm. but, but what's important for me always is like, how can I be honest? Like, how can I just make mm -hmm. this person a real person? Because I know mm -hmm. that if I just do that, 
than than I've done what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly right. And so it was important <clears throat> to me to look at real experiences and look at real things and, and, and just look at the human behavior inside of that, you know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and the passion inside of that, and like what would make Queen this person who was just so passionate and yet and so angry at the same time, mm -hmm. and how does her anger like manifest? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And, and then also just like, there was so much reality in it of just, this is the experience of being a black woman. Mm. It's right that you know. That I know, yeah. right, you know what I mean? Already just mm -hmm. in my bones. Like I don't even have to like go and look at a source for this. Yeah, like, right. I understand what this means mm -hmm. and what this feels like and what it's like to, to use all of the things that I've acquired, whether it's intelligence or status or whatever, as a wall around me mm -hmm. to deal with my pain. Mm -hmm. which is what Queen is doing and which what really we as black people have to do, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And that yeah. really drove it for me. And I mean, it was just like, the script was so beautiful and incredible that it was just like, you didn't really even need to look outside of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the black Bonnie and Clyde. How you gonna outrun the police? We hide in plain sight. <laughs> you didn't need to what look outside of your script, Lena Wait. The trauma of being black in America, I think, but also being in love, too. Mm -hmm. You know, it was those two things, the space that I was in, particularly at that time. And also, I was feeling very powerless, even though I had a show on, mm -hmm. you know, and I think I was on a TV show, I still felt like I didn't have any power mm -hmm. in the business. I was just like, I was talking to you about that. Mm -hmm. People would be very dismissive of, of me, and also I think because I'm young. I think there's a thing people, that was, I was feeling very dismissed. I, I just sort of know, I'm very aware of my gift. So I turned to that and I said, fuck these people. I was about to go write something rebellious. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think you can feel my rebelliousness in it. You can they feel it. They lit a fire under their ass. Man. <laughs> under that ass. You know, they were and, it uh, <laughs> You know, um, and that's why I say it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a rebel cry. It's, it's mm -hmm. but it's also, I was I was feeling a sense of trauma from like watching the news and I think people when they hear about black people being killed by cops it is it they know that it's sad they know that it's not right but as a black person for me there's no one there to hold my hand absolutely there's no one there to rub my back and tell me like that I'm okay I'm going to be okay we're going to be okay I have to self soothe mm -hmm. you know and so and I think that is how I do it, like like writing. And, mm -hmm. and this, my true source material are, are black people. Mm -hmm. Like I really wanted to be honest. I wanted to be, I wanted this to be the screenwriting version of Gordon Parks and that mm -hmm. he captured us, you know, just like there's no sauce on it. He would just take pictures of society. You know, the one that I thought I love so much is of the black kids mm -hmm. looking through the fence watching white kids playing on the playground. That is America and one photograph. That is still America. Right. Um, and so, but then in terms of the cinema that does affect it, Set mm -hmm. It Off was a big one. And even the film Just Another Girl on the IRT in oh. terms of that dialogue mm. and that realness. Um, that affected I think me people, so much oh as a God, kid. That movie blew me away. And so I think there's a, there's a desire to compare our movie to other white movies mm -hmm. that feel like this, like Bonnie and Clyde or Thelma and Louise, which I respect both of those films. I revisited both of those mm -hmm. films before I started writing the movie. You know, right. I'm not, you know, please. But I think for me, it's like black people can have black movies be our inspiration. Absolutely. And, and I, that's why I purposely didn't watch those movies oh, okay. going into it, because yeah. I wanted to stay away from it and I wanted it to come from blackness. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. I think for, for my writing process, sure. I just wanted to, you yeah. know, but yeah. I also, in watching them, I kind of thought to myself, oh, what do we look like in that narrative? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which know? so many people have seen, like one of the best compliments I think I've gotten from one of our good friends, Armina, she was like, wow, I feel like I've seen this film so many times in different versions and genres and forms, but I've never seen black people in them. Mm. So like all your influences, how you've grown up having to navigate through this like white cinema, right? Where we have to learn this language that's not innately our own mm -hmm. and how that's influenced your pen, mm -hmm. you know? And you've placed us in this, in this world where we can own and reclaim. Mm -hmm. Like that was really important. Let them go! Well, y'all remove Black Panthers, power to the people. All we can do is go forward. There is nothing back there for us. Let's just keep going. Mm -hmm. What was
was some stuff you were thinking about? I know mm-hmm. belly was a big one for you. <laughs> You're like, always belly. Belly. Belly's my go-to. Yeah. Um, and not just belly, but I think, right. you know, the so entire many. work of Hype Williams, which mm-hmm. I just saw the other day and I didn't realize you were in Digital Girl. Yes. I actually, Hype Williams gave me my first That's what he dance. told me. What? Yes. yes. Yes, I was. it was Kanye West and the dream, Walking on the Moon. Ah, I had come to LA to visit a friend, okay? This. And Hype put me in that, literally off the plane. He was like, I, I want to meet you. And I yeah. went to his, he was like, oh, my studio's right by the airport. We have to watch it. And I yeah, go no, to the no, airport no. and it literally just, he's like, puts me in a music oh, video. That's crazy. I wasn't a model, I wasn't doing anything like Man. that yet. And it was just like, and then when I moved to LA, you know, broke, didn't have any, like Hype always, he, I did like four music videos wow. for Hype. That's crazy. That's what he told me the other day. So obviously this man has shaped our culture, right? Mm-hmm. The way, I mean, he shaped my lens. Mm-hmm. I'm standing on his shoulder. And it's so like, you know, why are our heroes unsung? Like, you know, why is he not up there with a Fincher, with a Scorsese, uh, with a Spike Lee, you know? And it's just like, he has really redefined, I think, modern black cinema mm-hmm. in such an incredible way. Um, it has affected like our entire generation. Mm-hmm. So Belly and, and all of his work, I grew up an MTV baby. I remember like, you know, press and record on my VCR yeah. and just watching his video after video after video. And then here you come, revolutionizing the music <laughs> video as well. Right, yeah. come on. Anyway, yeah. so yeah. that's always one. Um, and then you challenged me by creating, which I'll never do again, mm-hmm. <laughs> a film that takes place in a car. You guys are like, I'm never doing another road movie. I think everybody here is good on uh, any car scenes for the is rest it, of their life. in the studio? Yeah. Right, exactly. When you brought that up yesterday, I was like, exactly. Because it's one thing if you're doing a car Woo. scene and you're you're in a studio. Right. It's another thing if you want to be like Melina Matsukas and have it be yeah, real. Yes. But just so, like you said, yeah, basing all too. our decisions in authenticity. Yeah. I knew that you guys passing that landscape and feeling the cement rolling under those tires, right? And us right. actually moving states and land, and the environment around it, how that inf- inform our story, how it inform you guys mm-hmm. in your performances. And I didn't want to be on the stage. Right. It's not real, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And we were making a very real story. Yeah. And so I looked to all these, these car films, right. the ones that I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to figure out how to sh- shoot these scenes in a way that, number one, mirrored their relationship um, as it progressed and wasn't repetitive. We need one of your cars. Do you kiss my black ass? He let him cost more than he love us. I ain't got no extra car just laying around. What about the blue Carolina? Got it, shut up. Mm. And it's turquoise. I don't know how low-key we gonna be right around a turquoise Catalina. That's the whole point. We be hiding in plain sight. Every song you reference, I made a playlist. Mm. And I put I that before the that. shoot. Oh, wow. I would just made a playlist in Q&S. And I was just listening every day. And I just wanted to like I want it's kind of because it felt like the heartbeat mm-hmm. of of the, of the soul of this story. Mm-hmm. I just want to be reminded by it because you can just do oh, I'm doing this technical job and that te- this technical and it's understanding there's like there's a soul that needs to be captured here. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying that? And if that's not there, and if it's not in you, mm-hmm. it's gonna. How do you feel about the music now? I've been going through it all. <laughs> I, I've been going through it all. Okay, that sounds it. I asked my chew, bro. Hey, no, it's but, music, and, and that was the great so thing. Yeah, because I was like, if I had, you know, obviously some song references, but it was just more so like trying yeah, to set a vibe and so. But that's I think, because I think yeah. my thing was, it was like more so. It that was sort of me talking to you yeah. of saying like, I want music to be. You know, all kinds of different music of, to yeah. be a part of it. And it was so great that Melina was like, yo, uh huh, yep, yep, yep. And obviously, we had to find some original things. We obviously went some old things. But I love that you didn't shy away from the fact that I really needed music to be mm-hmm. a part of this, like, heartbeat. And when you found Yeah, such but also, a, like, amazing. that we weren't dependent on it. Absolutely. You not. know, I wanted yeah. it to be a character. A part of it. Yeah. That's why, like, I don't edit, I don't use music in my first cut right. at all. Like, right. it's dry, it's clean, it's silent, you're able to digest so how the did performance. You, when you first watched the first cut without the music, how did you? How did you feel about it? Well, how did you then insert score and? Wh- I had you guys and your amazing, phenomenal performances. So I wanted to make sure that those were highlighted and what was really driving it. And then on top of it, the music could be another character and really elevate it mm-hmm. um, instead of having to depend on it to tell you how to feel. Yeah, you yeah. know, and I think what's great about our film is like, it's not like, it's not left or right. It's just kind of this. The decision is yours. I didn't want to use music to be like, yeah. now you're sad, yeah. now you're happy, now you feel this way. You know, I wanted the film to do that. And I knew, like, I wanted also the music 
to be another uh, way to track the journey. So I wanted local sounds. So mm -hmm. like when we get to New Orleans, we bring in the bounce with Megan Thee Stallion and Vicki Lowe, who's from the Eighth Ward in, in New Orleans. And when we go to Alabama, or what should be Alabama, it's in the juke joint, it's like we're in the blues, you mm -hmm. know? So like right, all yeah. these local sounds are telling you where you are on this journey right. as well. Your, your choice to include that juke joint scene, like mm -hmm. what kind of like inspired that and, 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 and what made you feel like, you know, that was a place you wanted Queen and Slim to go on their journey? I wanted to find a safe haven for them. And also I just like vintage things. I wanted mm -hmm. it to feel like, I even think I said like, something in reference, like, like it feels like something like out of a place of when black folks still drink out of a shitty water fountain, you know? And, uh, and I just wanted to be, it was the first time that those two characters could be romantic, that they could feel free, and that you saw uh, that black people were on their side. My name is Lena Waith, and it's been an honor and a joy to talk about the makings of Queen and Slim. We hope you come experience the movie, 1127. Bring all your friends, bring all your family, and come ride with us.